I'm Casey Carty, the first person from St. Martin to represent West Indies. I went to Antigua to play on the 15 tournament. I was playing for St. Martin at that time. And we got knocked out after the preliminary rounds, but I left with the most rounds at that point in time. So I was like, okay, if this is the pool of players, I could at least play for Leeward Islands. And I could back myself to push if I play consistently for Leeward Islands with this group of players, I'm probably one of the better players that I could probably make West Indies and, you know, set up myself. So it was that tournament that really opened up my eyes to be like, okay, you could get pay well for doing something that you love rather than sitting on a nine to five. And sometimes teachers just ask me what I want to be and tell them I'm a professional cricketer. And it was like, yeah, that's nice to have that dream, but you know, something more like accounting, a lawyer. Like, I, if I believe so, and I know my part be. I mean, so when they ask me, I just used to be like, well, I don't know. I, I even had one teacher tell me, like, cricket ain't a real sport. And this was a history teacher. I was like, what do you want me to stand in front of the class and teach history? <laughs> <laughs> so, like, coming from St. Martin, like, in sports, the mindset behind of it, like, people don't really think you could make it easy. You know what I mean? So, I'm glad that I reach here so people can actually see that, okay, you can reach. It's just for you to take care of your performances. And it don't have to be in cricket, it could be anywhere as long as you stay dedicated to the cause, you know what I mean? If, if you feel that's your part, you work towards it. You do the necessary stuff that you feel you need to do. And if you fall short, you're gonna feel good with yourself because, you know, you gave it your all. As a child, I always heard that when my father used to carry me on the field and I wanted to like get to him, like I would just stand up on the boundary until I see a broad brim and like run straight on the game, run straight on the field and they would be like, Katy, you gotta control your son. And he would be like, don't tell me nothing because you don't gonna. <laughs> So that's the first memories I have of being on the field, um, starting to play. From what I could remember, I was a bit older, other than like just little knock-ups in front of the side screen with my dad. His name is Keith Carty, just so you know, I wanted to play football. And he watched me and told me, I can't teach you football, so you can play what I could teach you, and that's cricket. <laughs> so I was basically forced into it. Um, it turned out for the, for the best. Um, I'm grateful for that, I always tell him so. It was always my childhood dream to reach here, you know? So he had a big part to play in that in a support role, my mom as well. There is no cricket, no school cricket in St. Martin whatsoever. They tried to start to get a program later on. I think I was finished with primary school at that time. They tried to get a little win ball because the pool of players, you know, they were, it was getting small and they wanted to try and get some. You guys said it's like, okay, try let me identify some talent in the schools and you know if they're good enough you could tell them okay put them into coaching in hardball but for me growing up it was just really like my father being on the hardball field and playing with Sam Martin at that time but to say from school system I never played a school game in my life ever that's just the system down there they're more into like baseball basketball and also football very Americanized I never used to really watch no cricket so Brian Lara came to Sam Martin. Trinidad versus Leos, that's the game he got his hand broke. I was in high school at the time, so could have been like 14, 15. We had quite a few players around that age group, so we would always play like one bounce in the net, one tip, two tip, four game. So I would come from high school, I can remember coming from high school, stopping the bus at Dallas store, walking down at the field so I could see the game, got it on a slope. And I see all my friends in the nets playing the game. So I was walking alongside the boundary and they say Brian Lara bat and I hear it on the, the radio. So I stop, I watch him play two balls. They are cut and I leave. And I ain't watch another ball. <laughs> and it's like it's only when I got older I realized like the standard of cricket, the level that was playing right here in Samarthan, that I grow older and aspire to play. Like I was just so blindsided to it. You know, I was just being a kid, just wanting to have fun. It's like a lot of people on the field, you know, you're not really taking it on the cricket too much. You, you want to get amongst your friends, but that's the one memory I have of watching a proper game in Samata. My father had picked me up from pre-USM. I was doing a program after high school because my mom was like, you're too young. I don't want you working and you stay home in this house, so you can go to school. So one day my father picked me up, he was like, I got some news for you. 
you, know, you got news for me. Like, why well, you just ain't tell me what you gotta tell me? Yeah, I got called to this say you got you are part of the West Indies and I said, What? I say like I say so, you know, it was really joyful. Then to get in the mix, we had a few camps leading up. Uh, it was very good. I felt like I got better in that two weeks based on the training that we did, the specifics that we worked on in comparison to the training that I was used to back in Samat and um, reaching to Bangladesh. I don't think I played the first two warm-up games. I played one against Bangladesh and one against South Africa. I think I scored 40 twice or something like that. In the tournament, I didn't, I didn't do as good as I wanted to. Um, that happened. They, I can remember leading up to the final, like the final game. I didn't know if I was going to play. So Graham West and Corey called me to tell me they want to speak to me in the hallway. So they asked me how I feel and I said, yeah, good. Uh, I said, well, all right, you're playing tomorrow. Okay, head around me. So, you know, I was relaxed. I was like, okay, you're playing. Forget what happened. You know, West Indies in a position to win their first ever World Cup. You need to put your best foot forward and try and contribute as much as you can. And, you know, help the guys that are already doing well. So I went to sleep with a clear mind. Um, I remember I was padded up to bat. I was, I think I was at four at the time. For some reason, I was a little like, shift from the team, as in like sitting. Like majority of the players was here and I was like so focused sitting down. And I can remember Kimo Paul calling me, he was like, you good? All right, you're gonna win this game today. Just like that. And like, I, I tell myself, if I go into bat, I'm not leaving it for no one. I walked into bat, watched the big score, but I said, required raise, it was three. So I was like, okay, good. I can manage this easy. I can make sure I hear till the end. Kimo came in. A lot of confidence. He's a very confident guy. Love to play cricket with him. Um, he was like, books me hard. Me and you. He's staying here to the end. You know, he had a little more aggressive. So he hit a few sixes, he had a few fours, and we side home, ran off. And it's really like when we sat down for the presentation, like I was sitting on the ground. I didn't even pat off yet. I was like, wow, I guess you, you was a part of something big. Like, you know what I mean? And you did well. I honestly thought Kimo was going to get man of the match. I think he like three wickets and he come up the tempo. And Graham West come tap me on my shoulder. He was like, he was man of the match. I was like, all right, cool. Like, I wasn't even bothered with it. I was like, yo, you are part of a winning World Cup squad, like the first ever. And then West Indies won the women's and, and still the men's. It's like just an amazing year. So when I see the seal number coming, uh, the call coming, we had a number. This number be, hello? So he had an accent, beige and Desi here. So he said, um, I just called to tell you, you got selected to go to Netherlands and Pakistan. I wanted to hang up one time and scream. <laughs> they were like, you know? So I was like, all right, thank you, thank you, thank you, Bob. Hang up. <laughs> yes, you know what I mean? Call my father, call my sister. So we was on call for like an hour and a half. I mean, we just talk about everything leading up. You know what I mean? Video call, he got, he got emotional. I don't really cry so easily, crazy. Uh, and he said, yo, Chief, you remember I had a time you said, all right, Casey, I don't know if you're going to play for West Indies, but, you know what I mean, I feel real good with you as a player. I feel like I did well. You could bat, 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 bat. I, I don't think I was doing too well. I was like, what are you telling me here? Like, I'm going to play for West Indies, you know what I mean? Like, don't base this one year, because you got people playing up to 33. Even if I'm 32 and you make it, you know what I mean? I make it, but I don't feel like I was that player to, you know what I mean, be in the first class setup so long and not make it. Even though my numbers could have been better, I'm still grateful. They saw something in me and I got the call up. I have a decent start. It's not the best, but it's not the worst. It's a good platform. Um, I'm just trying to build on that and just be something in world cricket, you know? I don't want to be like an average player. I want when West Indies come out to play against different teams, like I'm a topic of discussion. Like we gotta get this guy out, whether it's White ball, red ball, it doesn't matter, you know what I mean? I just want to be a proper player. I want to do a lot of things back home. If I get to be that player, that just paved the way, you know what I mean? Whether it's for the less fortunate, whether it's charity for school or anything, like, I just want to be able to give back from cricket. I generally feel like everybody have their own journey in life. Everybody have their own race to run. As long as you cross the finish line, that's what matters for me. So I always believe in perfect timing. I know at some point I was going to reach because I was really dedicated to it. You know what I mean? I didn't want it to be 
the player that play 13 years of first class cricket never never put on the maroon. And one day I was like, Casey, you will play for West Indies. So when you do play, make sure you're one of the players now that play one or two tests, 10 ODIs. Like, make sure when you reach, you're there to stay. You know what I mean? So like my goal had kind of shifted. So it's like not just to play for West Indies, to play for West Indies and make an impact. I don't have to be a Brian Lara, but I feel like my journey playing for West Indies is to open up the people's mind back home that, hey, if your child is in sport, you could support him. You know what I mean? There's, there's a possibility that he can make it. I always tell the kids in St. Martin, like, I was at y'all age, and to be honest, I see some of them not even better than me at that age. Some of them hitting six from 15, like, with ease, and it's like, you know what I mean? I couldn't do that. I could have barely cleared the Tatiya. I was like, if I want to play cricket serious, I just have to stick with it. Just have to be dedicated to it. When you go and play for St. Martin, you know what I mean? Don't play like, oh, you're playing against Antigua. You don't play no name, you know what I mean? Because you're playing big man cricket here in St. Martin to go match up with kids. Express yourself, back yourself. I always tell them so. Because I, I honestly feel there's like three, four of them that was better than a lot of us that come out St. Martin and it just so happened I playing for West Indies, so why can't they, you know what I mean? But everybody have their own journey. I never tell them like, don't bother with school or anything. Our education is very important. You could break your leg tomorrow and you, you got to fall back on something, but I always tell them stick with it.